how to use plugins in GarageBand. If you're just starting out with GarageBand, you may have not heard of plugins before, but GarageBand gives you the, in, the complete flexibility to add and edit plugins, um, just like you would in a more professional DAW like Logic or Ableton or Pro Tools and Cubase, that kind of thing. So let's get into, I'll show you exactly how to add plugins and how to edit plugins in GarageBand. If you're new to this channel and you're making music and trying to get that music heard, I'm Charles Klein, singer, songwriter, and producer. I'm making music and producing music too, just like you are. So feel free to subscribe to this channel because that's what this channel is all about. This is the GarageBand session we're gonna work in. I have a beat, a grand piano, some strings, and a pad. The way you add and edit plugins is the exact same for every track. So let's first go where the plugins are located on every track. Let's start out with this grand piano. So I'm just gonna click in the track and then I'm gonna go to the controls window here. It's this little kind of gear. Click that and we'll open up this box here. You could have seen this before. It's, not, it's a bit different than the editor window. The scissors window is where you can actually edit the MIDI. And then the controls window is where you can edit the controls and the sound of the instrument you're working on. So for example, the strings, if I click down here, this is gonna change the controls. If I click the pad, it's gonna change the controls. If I click the 808, it's gonna change the controls. So let's go back to the piano. We're gonna see um, on the left here, track and master. And if I switch the strings, it's gonna be the same. Track and master. The only thing that changes in, is in within this window here. On the left side, we're always gonna see track and master. And it's this box in here that we're interested in. Maybe yours is snapped up, so you can click down and you'll see the plugins window. And you'll notice the piano here that's stock in GarageBand already has these blue pills here. We have one that's a bit spaced out from the rest, this EXS24. Then we have something called the channel EQ, a compressor, and a tape delay. And then we have more room to add some more things. So these are actually plugins here, all of this really. The first one is an instrument plugin. That's where the this EXS24 is where the sound of the piano is coming from. This is actually a synthesizer that GarageBand has just modeled a piano sound around. By clicking on the left up and down here, we can go and ch actually change that synthesizer, change that instrument, AU generators or AU instruments. And you'll notice in my AU instruments, you might not have this. And these are actual VSTs, virtual instruments that I, that I own. And if you bought a Juno synth online or if you bought a new virtual instrument, you can use those in GarageBand. So you would go here under AU Instruments. Let's bring up a Juno. So now instead of a piano, we actually have the Juno. So let's close that down. Um, what hasn't changed is these pills. These, and I'm, I'm not sure if they're actually, I just like to call them pills, I guess, because they're in the shape of little blue pills. So we have on and off buttons on the left, and then we have up and down arrows on the right of each one. This is where we would add and edit plugins in GarageBand. And again, it's the same thing for every track. We can remove these plugins if we want, on, on the side here, up and down, and go to no plugin if we want to remove these. Now, if we wanted to start from scratch and add plugins, let's add that EQ back again. So we click in, and then we get this big drop down list here, split into recent plugins that we've used, and then these are plugins that GarageBand gives us for free. Amps and pedals, delay, distortion, dynamics, all the way down to utility and gain. And then we have audio units, so these are things that you, you may have purchased some paid plugins online. They would be inside audio units. Now let's add a channel EQ, um, a compressor, and some reverb. These are three standard plugins that you would have on a lot of your tracks in your productions. So how do you add an EQ on this piano track? Actually, it's a Juno synth now. So I can go up here and just add Juno synth. And this can be any type of instrument you want. We do the same thing if we were doing it on the strings or the pad. So let's go back to the, to the Juno synth here. Now, how do we add an EQ? First, we have to go to the drop down here and add channel EQ under EQ, channel EQ, or a single band EQ. The other way to quickly do it is GarageBand, because it's such a standard plugin to add, you have this EQ tab over here. So you can just click this, and that's actually gonna automatically add the EQ to that channel. So if we go back to controls here, you'll see that it was just automatically added. And this is just something GarageBand does because it's a very popular thing to add on every track. What this looks like, EQ, is gonna be the same thing when we open this plugin in the middle and click on these little sliders. That's gonna open the plugin we're, we're using. So here we have the EQ, but it's also 
here because it's a popular thing to use. It would be the exact same process to add a compressor. You click on this blank space shaded area here. You can add it anywhere. It is important of where you add the plugins. This is kind of called your channel strip, your the plugin chain. And the priority of where you put the plugins does matter. It's kind of in priority that the audio signal goes top down. So if we add a compressor here, go down to dynamics, compressor, the signal is first going to come in to the Juno synth and make the sound. Then it's going to be EQ'd, then it's going to be compressed. And then if we add a reverb here, go to reverb, we can add any of these reverbs. Let's add the space designer. So now you can see we have the Juno synth, a channel EQ, compressor, and a space designer. As we saw in the EQ, it, we don't have any more tabs for these plugins here. We don't have a tab for compressor and a tab for the space designer. So how will we actually use this compressor, right? If, we, if you've never heard of editing or adding a compressor to your tracks, what I recommend is going to this drop-down box here and then using a preset that is already inside this plugin. So if it's a drum, you're compressing a keyboard, guitar, voice. So let's say you are, this was actually a vocal and you want to compress your vocal. Well, you see you have all these different presets here, bright vocal, classic vocal, live vocal, and I would recommend just choosing one and then seeing how that sounds. I recommend doing the same thing for the reverb. So going here to the reverb, clicking the sliders, opening it up, then doing the drop down, and you'll see here I have large, medium, small, warped, surrounded, HD surrounded. So I'd stick to just large, medium, small. The, the, the larger the space, the more reverb it's gonna have, the more reverberation and echo is gonna, it's gonna sound like it's bigger or further away. So if you want that feel, then go for a large space. If you want that smaller space, per, like for a vocal exa for example, go to small spaces and plate reverbs and go to vocal plate. That's a great preset for a vocal. Let's start from scratch now and I actually pretend like we're using, a, um, we're building a vocal track and how will we add plugins and edit plugins on this vocal track. So we'd go to track, new track, audio, and then we'd go to controls. We're already here. So you'll already notice a difference on this audio track. We have a compressor, an EQ, and some sends here. And then we have this EQ that we've seen before with the piano. So basically, um, if we delete this compressor, no plugin, and this EQ, no plugin, nothing is gonna be, these are gonna be removed here. If we go back and add a compressor here, it's gonna show up here. And actually, if you want to increase the threshold of the compressor, the ratio, the gain, or the attack, you can do that. If you don't know what any of this means, that's okay. Open up this compressor again, and just like we did with the piano, go to the voice. Let's say this is a vocal track we're doing. We can go to a dance vocal. And so these knobs will have changed now when we click dance vocal. And so it's a different style of compression. Okay, let's X that. So before the compressor was above the channel EQ, does that matter? Um, there's different schools of thought. Some people like to EQ before the compressor. Some people like to EQ after the compressor. Um, so you do either, it doesn't really matter. The next thing I wanna add is a reverb. So you can see here, we, already, we have this ambience and reverb. And when we add the a reverb here, let's add the space designer. You can see it's given us two more knobs here. So we can X this plugin again and just play with these dials on our vocal, increase the reverb, increase the length and how long the vocal is, or we can go in the middle here and then to a preset, let's go down to our vocal plate. Plate reverbs, vocal plate. And you can see it's switched that for us. So what other plugins would you want on a vocal track? Well, you definitely want something like called a de-esser. So we can click that and go to dynamics and go down to de-esser. And this is gonna take away the really harsh frequencies that come from S's. So just by adding it on the channel, it's gonna work. And then you can see it's added more knobs for us. So the more plugins we add, the more controls we're gonna have down here. Those are the, probably the most standard plugins to add on a vocal chain. You can always add more. For example, maybe we wanna add some delay to the vocal. We can go down here. Now we, the shaded area is gone, but you can see just when I pop over under the de it highlights to, to blue. I'm gonna click on that and then go down to delay. And let's do a stereo delay. 
and it hasn't opened up more controls for me that's just because we ran out of space here on the bottom and then go to factory and then choose one of these preset delays like if you tr just try 1 8 for example and see how that sounds if you don't like it go up here and try another one maybe 1 4 1 half um, 1 8 swing this kind of thing just try out different ones and see what it sounds like in a comment let me know if you have any questions on how to add or edit plugins in GarageBand and if you're making this music and you want to know more of these tutorials and learn more about GarageBand please feel free to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video